All right, hello, welcome to Fridays at Four on twitch.tv slash DDOStream. I'm your community manager, Cordovan, and I'll be with you for the next hour. We're going to talk a little bit about the upcoming VIP loyalty reward program. We'll have a little bit of the latest news, and then I'm going to run more quests here with Update 67, Slice of Life, a, an adventure pack that you can get for free right now by logging into the game, going to the Hall of Heroes, and picking up this month's Year of the Dragon reward. So there you go. Um, welcome, everyone. It's been a couple of weeks. I was off all of last week. Did anything happen? Oh, yeah, a whole ton of things happened. <laughs> we were busy. It was funny when I was watching the video from a couple weeks ago, just kind of get my bearings of where I left off and what I was doing. I was so happy heading into that Easter weekend. I was like, hey, it's going to be a fun weekend. It wasn't a fun weekend. It wasn't fun at all. We had some downtime issues. And then while I was off last week, uh, we went and had a bit of a make good and some other things like that and, and worked to resolve the issue. And uh, last weekend, uh, we had some lag-related issues on Orion in particular that we're looking at um, as well, that we've been looking at this week. So uh, it's it's been a busy couple of weeks, but we also have some very exciting things happening as well. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that uh, here in the coming minutes. I did want to mention, though, that Update 67 is available, and you do want to talk to Zatharal on the Eberron Hall of Heroes through April 23rd. Now, next week is the 17th. And then the Wednesday after that is the 24th. So that's when it's going to flip over to the next reward. So make sure you do that. You've got, you know, what, not quite two weeks to get that done. But do get that done, even if you're going to stay VIP and all that sort of thing. Um, you're also getting VIP Daily Dice Gold Rolls through April 23rd as well. So hopefully you've been taking advantage of that. But if not, you've still got time to get those Daily Gold Rolls done if you want. We do have a crafting XP boost going on this weekend. That's 25% through April 14th. And let me get to the main bit of news then for today, which is this. All right. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the VIP loyalty rewards program that we kicked off, uh, or well, we announced rather this week. This begins on May 1st. We'll have an exact start time a little bit as we get closer to it, but something like the morning Eastern time on May 1st will uh, flip it live and then everyone who's VIP is going to uh, pick up the sign up bonus reward. And then the first of the month from any point after that, so June 1st, everyone who is VIP already and had picked up that sign up bonus we'll get the first month completed and then july 1st will be the second month completed and what have you so this is a login reward bonus for vips that we're debuting this week and we have an article up on ddo.com that explains how it works um the we currently have 12 months on our list here this list will grow over time so there will eventually be, say, a month 13, 14, things like that. We could do some consolidation of the list. There are some ways that we can kind of play around with it over the years if we want to. Um, but the main idea is if, as long as you stay VIP once per month, you'll be able to speak to an NPC in the Hall of Heroes, and you'll be able to pick up the next progressive reward from the one you've just picked up. So uh, once you've picked up the third month, the following month, you'll be able to pick up the 4th and the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, etc. If you let your VIP subscription lapse, uh, it'll still retain the things that you've unlocked um, for the most part. And some things are v while you're VIP, but like the mounts and the cloud and that will stay on your account. And the progress you've made is mostly what I was talking about. The progress you've made will be retained should you resubscribe again in the future. So let's say the last month you were VIP you picked up month seven and then for whatever reason you decide you're not vip for the next 90 days and then you do uh subscribe you'll be able to pick up uh with the first of the next month the eighth reward is how that will work got things like bonus 
DDO points. We have a VIP bag of many things that, uh, you know, about a couple of times throughout this, you'll be able to pick one of these items up that you might want. Got a bonus character slot, item durability ward, and uh, even a uh, crafting XP boost. And if you're VIP, you'll be able to click a collectible node and get a chance at a crafting material token, which is essentially a crafting materials picker. And then in the eighth month, we've got the greater VIP bag of many things. And you can see all the hearts of wood and things that are in there as well. We do have a couple of extra potions. This is the extended VIP elixir of discovery and the VIP sovereign three experience elixir of 50% XP. This lasts for 12 hours. It is a separate item, but does not stack with the other sovereign potions. So the way it'll work is let's say you've got a 50% not VIP Sovereign Potion that you have chugged. And then you chug the VIP Sovereign Experience Elixir. Similar to what happens if you have a lesser potion you consume while a greater potion is active, it'll only count down the timer on the one that you've got active. And then when that timer expires, it'll refresh with the highest available bonus that you've got consumed. That sounds a little confusing, but basically it works just like all the other XP potions work in terms of only having one be active at the same time. And the VIP is tiered slightly higher than the regular Sovereign, if that makes any sense. There's even a VIP discovery boost where you'll get a 1% chance to have named loot drop for your characters in chests that will stack with the Elixir of Discovery and it'll stack with itself. So if in the future we do bring out a second VIP discovery boost that you can claim, not saying we're going to do that, but if we were to do that in the future, that would then become a plus 2% um, and what have you. So it'll give you that 1% when you claim it. We also have a new always available VIP perk where if you are a VIP, you can swap spells in any public area and you don't have a cooldown when changing spells at the trainer. And I've seen some discussions on the forums about uh, how that impacts sorcerers and that as well. I appreciate that feedback. Uh, this is what we're going live with here for now. Uh, you will just have to speak with an NPC named Violet Peregrine in the Hall of Heroes. And everything else is pretty much there, but let me show off the pictures because this is the storm cloud trail. I think that's pretty good looking. And then here's the cloud mount that you'll be able to see as well. And that's that's all pretty pretty sweet. Let me go take a look at chat. If we change anything on the first 12 months of rewards, will that affect people who are on like their 14th month? I think that that is the reason we don't generally intend to do that. Uh, instead, we'll be extending the track rather than going back and uh, adjusting the track. Oh, sorry, my volume got moved up way too high. I apologize. You pick, probably picked up too much background noise for these first eight minutes. There's some, something in my process is messing with my mic levels. And it, it adjusted it on me in a way that was deleterious to sound quality. So in theory, if we were to do something like swap out something in a month that you've already achieved, um, I don't think we're going to do that for that reason. But I think in general, the way the system would work is that you would be able to then acquire that if you've unlocked that month. Prior rewards unlocked will remain accessible, like for a consumable uh, cosmetic, you can pick up uh, additional copies. I don't think the actual item is quite ready in terms of the percentage chance for that crafting materials token. If it makes sense for us to publish a percentage drop rate on that token, it'll probably be in the descriptor of the item itself and in the release notes in its relevant point. But I wouldn't want to speculate as to the drop rate right now. I don't actually know what it's going to be. Okay, uh, so Strimtime wants to know, can only VIPs collect rewards? If you buy one month of VIP, 
on May 1st, but don't collect on June 1st, can you collect your 500 points on June 2nd? No, you must be VIP at the time of collection in order to collect the item. Uh, why are we not delivering all the items to the player automatically? I think it's ultimately a decision-making choice on how we could best distribute the system long-term. And generally, it's better for you to opt in rather than everything just showing up in inventory. Long term, that tends to be less elegant of a solution. There will not be a situation, Nimvin, to your question, where you would get two gifts in one month. It will be one gift per month. So if you are VIP, in the middle of a month, do you get two gifts or do you just get the gift on the first of the next month? You would get your immediate benefit. Let's say you're going from square zero here. You log in, you become VIP. You would, uh, and you not claimed a gift for that month. You would get your immediate sign-in bonus. And then on the first of the next month, you would get the next progressive gift. I, in a scenario which is not particularly likely, but let's just say there's a scenario where you were VIP on April 1st, you claimed your gift, on April 2nd, your VIP ran out, and then on April 3rd, you resubscribed, you would not get the opportunity to get a second gift in April. Instead, the next progressive gift would become available to you on the first of the next month. Oh my God, I think I said that right. Are the rewards set in stone? Can there be changes before going live? I mean, we theoretically could. I think we're pretty comfortable with where we are. Uh, we have announced that we're going to be upping significantly the Sentient XP uh, token that you would, can get from the gift of many things that's going to be going up quite a bit from what was originally published that was actually a mistaken number there um but otherwise i think we're pretty well set for may 1st here which is just just a couple weeks away at this point in terms of what we'll be offering and then we'll be in the future expanding the track and doing some work on it that way No, the VIP bag is delivered once, right? So you will go and claim it on a server. In general, the goal is to have all of the items that make sense for it to be this way be bound to account. But there is distribution where it's not one per server, it's one per account. So it is true that if you are currently, if you are a VIP and do not log in to claim your reward, you will not be getting that reward retroactively when you do decide to log in and claim it. It is ultimately a login rewards program uh, for VIPs. So there is a component of it that does encourage you to log in every month to claim your reward while being VIP. So I think I know, Alex, uh, Axel, how much Sentient XP the gem is going to be in the bag, but I don't want to say it today because the conversation about what it should be happened like yesterday and the work to actually put it in game isn't done yet. And I don't want to give a number and then have that number be wrong. But uh, it's better by a pretty significant order of magnitude from what was originally listed. Can we have video of the trail and mount? I would think eventually we will be able to. I don't have that video set for you today. I just have these screenshots. But that's a cool idea. I'm sure at some point we'll be able to show that off to you. So uh, to your other question, Axel, if someone subscribes for the first time, 
a year from now, in May of 2025, will they start from month one in the 2024 calendar or the 2025 calendar? So we're not organizing it by yearly calendar. That's the first thing to know. So there is no 2024 and 2025 calendar. It is a track, a progression track that starts at one and then goes up. So in that scenario, whatever point you would subscribe, whether it be after May 1st here or May 1st of next year, you will start with the first time sign up bonus and then progressively go through the loyalty rewards uh, chart. Okay, let's see. Will there be other elemental trails, fire, ice, shadow made available eventually? I am going to say we do like to, once we've got a really cool looking particle effect thing like that, we're probably going to want to do it again. So probably, but I haven't, I don't know anything specifically. So you are correct though, Axel, that wherever, whenever you start initially as VIP, you will start at the start of the track. So that means everyone will get the opportunity to acquire, say, the Storm Cloud Rider Mount, but won't have to, um, you're, you're not going through it again and again. So there are pluses and minuses. There are some things, you know, once you start talking about years and years from now, there are some things we could potentially do to um, consolidate people on the track or something like that. But that's the future really kind of issue more than it is a now issue. And it's something that, that we do have some, some thoughts we could do as well. So, all right. I think, I think I mostly got through everything. So let me get my game client ready here. See if we have any other final questions. The trail stacks with footprints, eyes, and wing toggles. Yes. I think so. I know we at least said footprints, didn't we, in the fact? Good question about the wing toggles. Let me see what we say about that. That doesn't prevent footprints from displaying. So I, when I look at that cloak, I'm going to say that that is probably using the wing slot. But maybe not. That's a very good question. I'll have to look into that. But it at least will not conflict with footprints. Can one of the VIP benefits be acting as community manager for a day while I'm on vacation? Okay, but it'll have to be when you're on vacation too. And then you'll have to sit from like a rest stop on your phone to moderate the forums at like two o'clock in the morning. That's, that's what you get to do. I might've had to do that recently. Okay, so let's say next year, uh, 2025 first month changes from 500 DDO points to something else. Will they get the 500 points or something else? Uh, I, like I say, I don't think we're actually planning to do it that way and for that reason. But I think in theory, were we to change something up, we would probably make it additive. And I don't think we would be doing the points, so. All right, yeah, I think we're looking pretty good. Let me, uh, let me move over to the game camera. I'm about ready to do some renovation on a haunted house here. How is the player council stuff going? Uh, so it was going great until it reached my desk, at which point it has begun collecting dust. However, it's only because I was on a roll from 
PAX East to uh, our anniversary related work and things. And then I was off for a week and then I've been back dealing with other things and we were launching the VIP program and other stuff. So I have not actually had time to do my portion of the work, which is really the final portion to set aside some time to onboard people, get the emails all sent out, all the NDAs sort of sorted and any questions there, get the list ready to go. Uh, coordinate with the rest of the team because what we'll probably end up doing is archiving all of the current forums and Discord chats, and Discord chat in particular might be a little labor intensive. Uh, so we'll probably will try to do that on like a Wednesday here either I don't know if it's going to be done by next Wednesday probably not so but within the next couple of weeks the goal is to refresh the players council conversations and everything send out the invites and start getting people onboarded uh, and then we'll be onboarding people for probably uh, another two three weeks before it really is all fully settled and uh, then we'll be rocking along. So I would expect to hear something within the next couple of weeks. But ultimately where it's at is with me, and I ain't done nothing, because I've been busy with other stuff. But it's on my list of things to do. Smashing things. I can do that. Oh, anyway, it let me, before I get totally going here, if there's one thing I want you to know about my Uber Elite character here today, this is it. So, um, and also tear down the walls they wanted removed while you're at it. When I was running quests this past week, I picked up this thing, which is the legendary swordfish. And uh, so I spent time this past week swapping out the sentient gem from what I was using, which was the Bitter Edge, to the Legendary Swordfish. And the Legendary Swordfish is a totally cool item. It's got armor piercing, concentrated corrosive salt slashing, gashing, etc. I, I'm going to miss the frigid response. I really like that chance to freeze an enemy in a block of ice. I found it really useful. I also am going to... I think miss that keen, although I think I'm getting it from something else. Because uh, I noticed that I'm still 70 to 20 on my crit range. Uh, anyway, the point is, it's not statistics that got me to do this. This is why. Because this is what the legendary swordfish looks like. And so I am now a tabaxi wielding a fish. And that is far more important to me than any kind of statistical boost that said sword might provide. Although I'm glad that it's also all right. This house is indeed quite old. This renovation job should be easy. The walls are practically falling down already. Angry spirits charge towards you. Maybe this job won't be as easy as you first thought. Oh. take care of that stump. That's one of these specters, I believe, cause on that one. I also forgot to summon my hire on that. I'll have to take care of that here in just a second. Yes, we need a double-handed swordfish. It can actually be like a swordfish. I yet to wield in two hands or something like that, like a great club. All right, let me actually bring out Bulwark.
Yeah, uh, but the the I mean, the thing is, if I don't want to be silly, if I'm in a raid or whatever, and I'm with someone who's just like, you know, can we maybe just tone down the you hitting things with the fish bit? I can always just pop back on. This is the uh, Underdark Warrior Sword cosmetic, and I that also looks really good, and so I can always just swap that out. But when I want to be a tabaxi hitting things with a fish, and who doesn't? I can. You have completed the agreed upon renovations. Now to investigate the strange behavior. Ooh, I'm just being coy. Oh gosh, that is so good. I was on uh, DDO Players News last night uh, with Drac and Pineleaf, and I believe that they posted it up on the forum so you can go listen to the chat if you want to. We really just kind of went through the VIP benefit program, talked a little bit about what we were doing in game and what have you, and, and so that's really all it has been. So I don't know that you missed a whole lot, uh, but one of the things... Uh, we were doing is cracking some jokes. It was pretty fun. We we're talking about a escape room board games. You know, escape room in a box. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to sell an escape room in a box. It's a huge box. And I don't think they understood my joke. To see, like, putting a whole room in a box. Get it? They just think airplane. So... Oh, wait a second, are you saying the jokes are supposed to be funny? Since when? That's true. <laughs> That's true, the, uh, the fish dance. Yeah. So, it was a fun show. I recommend that you check it out. DDO Players News has been around for a long time, and them, uh, Drac and Pineleaf are awesome, and uh, I love their show. So, I was happy to be on. Just kind of chat and talk DDO. I have not heard of plans to tone down the Dragonlord base visual graphic, but that's something I would perhaps we can take a look at in the future when time permits. It is a little on the bright side, is it not? Now, I don't mind it. I kind of like it, but I definitely have seen some of the feedback of those who are like, yeah, okay, but uh, a little bit less, maybe. And maybe that's something that we can take a look at for the future. Yes, the Exalted Angel Barrier Graphics. I've seen that on that as well. I, I saw a forum thread, I don't know, within the past month that talked a little bit about some of the flashier portions of DDO and a desire for us to better provide an option to not display some of those flashier effects. And I think that that's, you know, certainly valid feedback that perhaps at some point in the future when we have an opportunity to take a look at our some of these user interface elements, maybe some work can be done there. I can't talk about red wizards, but, you know, we ain't that far off. So that'll be happening pretty soon. But today, no. Sorry.
just how good you are at demolition. Maybe that should be your plan for when you retire. When I retire, it can just be a side gig. Boundaries custom crate shipping. We do a smashing job. You notice a translucent figure nearby. He clearly sees you, but doesn't move. We promise to get your precious objects in mul one, mul one pieces. One box of pieces. From point A to point B. If we ever do decide to add cards of curse removal to the DDO store, I'm sure that we'll announce that during our weekly sales, but that's not something I have heard of us planning to do short term. Yes, so a Champion Hunter weekend got brought up on the forums of late that it has been a while, something like six months since we last did a Champion Hunter week. And I was talking to SSG Branding a little bit about it, and we were able to get a Champion Hunter Week added in May. So within a couple weeks here, we'll be having a Champion Hunter Week. I can't remember if we had, we had to kind of work it around other benefits and schedules and things, but it's something like the first, it's in the first half of May, so either that first or second week. I can't remember which one it landed in now. But it'll be in early May. We'll have another Champion Hunter week. It's true we haven't done a Mimic Hunt in a while. Do people actually... Do people want a Mimic Hunt? I know that sometimes people are like, Do I really want to be killed by Mimics this weekend? But, uh... Maybe. Maybe we should do one. It's been a little while, has it not? Gaspar explains that his undead housemates have become agitated because of something dark down in the basement. You rest, master. He's not Hold keen on fighting, so he asks you to <laughs> check it out. Just kidding. So, uh, Nymphen, I have been in contact with uh, a fellow employee at Daybreak who is working on that content creator program that you mentioned. And to get other people up to speed, a Daybreak announced a content creator program um, the week of PAX East? Around the week of PAX East? Something like that? Uh, I think it was. And that's something that is has not yet launched, but will be launching soon. And aims to really provide a point of contact and a resource by which uh, Daybreak and its content creator uh, community door, folks can night, no um, interact. The initial target, I believe, is going to be interfacing with some of Daybreak's uh, biggest existing creators and pieces. Like, I guess I, I can't break any news, but let's just say GameX Let's just say big streamer Y plays Game X, and um, we want to bring them more on board. So it'll be doing things like that. So, in terms of just sort of um, everyone being able to apply, as soon as I know more information, I will let you know. I don't actually know at the moment um, when that might be happening for DDO. But I think eventually it will. It might be some time yet, though. But eventually we'll have some interfacing as well. A lot of this is really targeting uh, a lot of... Um, what do you want to call it? Sort of... 
reaching out and providing a conduit to some of the bigger variety streamers out there. But it also has the potential to be used for any streamer of our games, big and small, eventually. As soon as I've got actually something of substance to share on it, I'll let you know. But it's a pretty exciting thing to, to see in the works. Now, where, where the heck am I supposed to go? Find a way into the basement. Okay. What did I miss? I feel like I've missed something. I'm not sure what. Oh, I have to go outside, speak to the man examining the house as well. This man introduces himself as Miles Long, a real estate broker. He's been trying to convince Gwen to sell the house for a tidy profit, but she remains determined to stay. Miles had hoped the undead would scare her away, so I guess we'll see. I don't recall, uh, you know, so far I've not had this quest cause me any problems. But perhaps this was the first, huh? Oh, no, here we go. All right, now I should be able to make my way to the basement. Right? Nope. Uh, I am not personally aware of the dimension door issue you're referencing sounds like kind of an exploit if players are able to use it to automatically kill enemies that they ought not so uh perhaps there we go. Mm, all right i'll let you into the basement the apparition concedes perhaps send in a bug be report on careful that down there it's really scary I'm not saying it hasn't happened for a long time. I'm just saying I'm not personally up to speed on that particular bug. Your sense of dread grows with each step. Can't know everything. The tang of mildew reaches your nose as you descend the final steps into the basement. Shadows swirl around the room, threatening to snuff out the already dim light. Then the shadows coalesce into a single dreadful form. A wraith. It charges towards you with a shriek. Uh, I'm sorry, Johnny Hunt. I'm not actually sure what question you're asking me related to the VIP program. Uh, I am not familiar with the name you mentioned. And we say whether to consider the return of permanent VIP or season card. Um, are you, if you're asking whether we'll do a lifetime reward, or like a lifetime VIP in the future, the answer is no. We have no intention to offer a lifetime VIP in the future. So, uh, you know, this we've been saying that this is uh, an adventure pack that shows a little bit of the lighter side of DDO. It's called Slice of Life, right? It's it's meant to be a little bit of a lighter-hearted adventure pack. But we've also been seeing the forum chatter in that, that it's like, okay, um, you know, silly's cool, but we want to make sure that it's not going to be only silly from here on out. And the answer is it won't be. I will be going back to more serious topics and things with Mythdrenor and elsewhere in the future. 
every now and then we like to get a little goofy. I think people know that. Um, but for the most part, we do try to keep a fairly serious tone. And so I would expect to see us do that here in the coming adventures. Problem is my... I have 17 negative levels here. That makes uh, killing this thing with the fish a little more difficult. Thankfully, I still have my uh, other boosts. That'll help somewhat. Alright. You spot an object in the dark corridor behind where it appeared. You find a strange tablet behind where the wraith appeared. The object gives off an... Ooh, ominous legendary story. the renovator, Gaspar huh? Gaspar has lived in this house for a while. All right, so I got a repeating heavy. Force blast, keen, blunt trauma, construct bane. It's pretty cool. All right. That's cool. No one will probably just sit in the back. When well, you want to say hello, is that what's it? my cat is just meowing at me. So let's uh, say hello to the cat here while I rest trying out. I need to get a death word clicky. I, I am. Almost certain I've got, if I really need it, I've got the death word clicky from uh, Tangle Root in my bank somewhere. I suppose I could get that out. Uh, at times I've actually had the, there was the trinket that absorbs negative effects, and I had that going for a while too, but even that wouldn't help with uh, 17, so. All right. Oh, you're going to say hello to the camera, are you? Well, the stream will enjoy that. <laughs> I word, 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 uh, where'd he go? Gaspar. Oh, that's upstairs. Right. So, my cat has decided that the right side of the desk is her side of the desk. And that's where she can sit and stare at the human when she wants to go outside or get food. And so that's what we're witnessing here today. Gaspar doesn't recognize the strange tablet, though he does remember a real estate broker acting strangely before Gwen purchased the house. Perhaps you should see whether this real estate broker knows more.
The shady real estate broker proved to be even shadier than expected. He's a necromancer, trying to gain nice. the property for himself. His scheme was to seize the undead for his own ends, then sell the land to a local developer. But his plan has been foiled, thanks to you meddling adventurers. Return to Gwen and explain the situation. Gwen isn't too surprised to hear of the real estate broker's villainy. She thanks you for your thorough investigation, as well as for your renovation work. Well, uh, I don't have time for Fred's first date, but we'll give a shot on the cooks and just sort of go for a little while here. See how, how much I can get done. My cat is still sitting, staring at me. You just can't see her because... Yes, she told you to say that. You've arrived in the private office of Evander Rediger, the host of the cooking competition. He greets you eagerly. Your host asks you to enter your own personal kitchen. Speak with your sous chef to Anything new to tell you? Well, I've been talking. Your sous chef begins to yell out orders. So we went over the VIP program. Uh, what else did we have? The crafting boost this weekend. The doors to your kitchen uh, burst open. Well, well, we get Thugs back to combat. Rush in, attacking your sous chef and staff. Stop them before they do any more damage. We have a patch coming up in a couple of weeks. That'll be sort of a catch-all of anything left before we sort of move on to update uh, 68 here. So that's cool. We do have um, a little bit of performance work that we're hoping to get out here in the near future. Uh, we've done continued work on the open AL drivers that, you know, is causing some consternation both to us and other players we think is responsible uh, indirectly to a crashing issue related to sound in Isle of Dread. That's kind of a long-standing one. And uh, we're, we're, we're testing uh, an attempt to fix that right now. So... Um, yeah. We're cooking ahead on, say, the new launcher and other stuff, too. Kind of longer-term projects. Don't really have anything new to say about that here today. But the main thing is we got this VIP thing launching on May 1st, and we're doing some work behind the scenes to get ready for that. And to get ready to debut it, so... Should be a good time. And also hard at work on a certain uh, myth journal work that's also well underway. You found Kitchen 2, the We're location doing stuff. of the first rival. Time for one kind of cooking you can do without the stuff. Tenderizing.
And you need someone to clean the pool of your airship. Well, you can summon an NPC named Nymphant. And he will come and clean up your airship for you. What do you think of that? <laughs> I'm joking, of course. No, although if you really wanted to have a streamer in-game as an NPC, it would need to be some kind of commentator, would it not? So it would be an NPC, like a hireling, that would follow you. Wouldn't necessarily attack or anything, but would instead just comment on everything you're doing. So it'd be like, I, ah, I see you're walking down the hall. Alright, so you're now walking down the hall. Okay, you're using this and that. And it would be commentary while you play. That's what that's what a true streamer NPC would probably need to be inside of a, a video game, would it not? I suppose that could also be a forum NPC as well. They would just comment on everything you're doing. Wouldn't have to be a streamer. Yeah, it's the... Well, what the cat is immune to, I think, is that... Isn't that bane damage? I think I've got something that's doing a small amount of bane damage per hit. Uh, it's one of my... Um, uh, it's the outsider thingy, right? That's on the sword. Yeah, the Scourge of the Outsiders, I think. The Orange Augment. I think that's what's causing the immune message. Hey, DDO Experience. Uh, also, I don't know if I was able to really mention this two Fridays ago, but we have a new show on, on Mondays at 8 p.m. Eastern called the DDO Experience. It's a build focus game, or stream rather, uh, done by the DDO Experience here. And uh, it should be a good week. This will be week two, right, on Monday? guarantee you've got the best cuisine out there. I could skip that. Okay. Uh, so I think have I found everything. No. Oh, week three already. Okay. Yeah, that's right, because it's this Monday. It was week two. Someone had suggested in the forums recently that, you know, we do get Sev or someone on the show here in the near future, and I do think we'll end up doing that. I, I don't have an exact date or plan, really, to pass along, but it's something that, that Sev and I have talked about, how he wants to get back on the show and do, do some Q&A and what have you, so I'd expect to see that at some point soon. I also heard from one of the developers who has not really been on the live stream before, um, who had expressed interest in perhaps doing a bit of a chat with the person who made this thing stream uh, for one of the Update 67 dungeons here. 
And so if that works out, that would be really fun, where I would probably either to pre-recorded video or just to do it live, uh, have the developer who made one of these Update 67 dungeons on, and just talk a little bit about the making of it, take some Q&A from chat, any sort of questions that are on your mind. And that should that should be pretty fun too. So, I don't know I don't know 100% that's going to happen, but it seems pretty good. Odds are pretty good that it will. So what you're talking about, Syax, is essentially a shift from our current uh, difficulty unlock single use tokens to something that would be more time based. That would be a project to create an item like that, but it's it's certainly not outside of the realm of possibility. This large tower, centrally located like that between the kitchens, is where the competition judges await. You'll need to return here later when your meal is complete. Uh, so, yes, uh, we have work continuing to cook along, uh, and some work being tested related to the updated launcher and multi-factor authentication and other things. I don't yet have a timeline. You know, at some point we'd like to give it a preview, if possible on Bull Roar. Or not Bull Roar, but, uh, Lamania. Sorry, wrong game. Um, but no ETA to announce. That's not the kind of thing uh, I would want to speculate on either. I don't know. But as soon as it's ready, we'll let you know. And work has been done on it. Uh, you know, there are people who worked on it this week, so... Uh, what's going on with work with the Raptor audio crash bug? So one of the, I understand that that's what it's called in the community. We have so far not yet been able to reproduce it with a Raptor specifically. I know there's a general thought and it may well be the case that the Raptor is causing it, but we have not been able to repro the Raptor portion of it. So, but what we are doing is doing some work to open AL and that's going to be tested within the next week or so. And if everything goes well there, it'll probably be in update 67.2. So the next game update is, could potentially have a fix in for that issue. You know, we've tried to solve this issue before and it hasn't been successful. So I don't want to Count our chickens before they're hatched, but that is the plan, is within the next few weeks uh, we should have at least a new fix in for the audio crashing issue in Isle of Dread, which we believe is related to some kind of OpenAL driver issue, and we're going to be updating the OpenAL driver as well. Has a new player's council been finalized? Well, no, although partially. So within the next few weeks, I would expect to see us begin sending out invitations, but it's not a one and done list. Uh, instead, we have an initial list and then we'll keep going through applications. And we're not gonna hold up the first 40 just because we got 300 applications to go through. So we'll probably get a group of somewhere in the range of 30, 40 people, send out the invitations, get them onboarded, and then go through another chunk and get some more people onboarded and what have you. Um, so it'll be an ongoing process. But yes, within the next couple of weeks, we should have some news related to that. I do not currently think we will be at Gen Con. 
That would be cool. I would love to go to Gen Con. I do not currently think we are going to Gen Con this year. I'm sure we will be back at some point in the future, but I have not heard of any plans as a company to go to Gen Con this year. And I myself will probably can't make it that week. I was just at PAX East and picked up a really fun two-player tabletop game. Um, PAX East has sort of a tabletop bit as well. Were any fish harmed in the creation of the weapon I'm holding? Um, I'm going to assume that the one fish I'm holding is not doing well. It is certainly not within its preferred environment, that being water. And alive. I'm assuming this fish is dead. It may be magical, but it ain't that magical. Is it a smelly web? Well, so it could just be a cosmetic, right? I don't actually know that this is a real fish. It could just be some kind of club-like object made to look like a fish. I mean, that's possible. If you haven't seen it yet, we do have our video of the PAX East presentation up on our YouTube channel. I've seen it's got about a thousand views, which isn't a ton. So that means there's probably a bunch of people who aren't aware that I got it out on the YouTube channel yet, but it is. So if you want to watch our presentation from PAX East this year called uh, From Sketch to Scare, Crafting Creatures, we talked about making monsters, and I even had a guest from Wizards of the Coast there with us as well, so that was very cool. Might be worth checking out this weekend if you have some downtime. I mean, I don't think the the purpose of their of um, the Wizards of the Coast representative at PAX East was to cut some kind of secret deal with us or anything. <laughs> they, they were hanging out, having fun on the panel, talking, making monsters. I wouldn't read too much into that. There are aspects of this character was a dark apostate in the past life, and now I'm a dragon lord fighter. And there are parts of uh, me that really miss my dragon lord, or not my dragon lord, but my dark apostate abilities. I'm enjoying this dragon lord a lot, but I, there's a few things I really kind of miss about being that dark apostate. I 
electric days is going to be a problem. person is just getting in the way, so let me take care of Brandy Boromar quickly here before I fight Quinn. I'm digging my Dragon Lord a lot. I am. I just missed that, uh, I can't remember which ability it was that made me big, and then particularly it was kind of my oh crud moment, where I would be like, oh no! And then I got, you know, 10,000 hit points and I'm all nice and big and survivable. I miss that. I may have to find a way to see if I can work that back in with some kind of multi-class thing. I also really miss in Beckon Divinity. Uh, I really like the Beckon Divinity ability out of whatever tree that is that I had in my Dark Boss day. Yeah, it's an epic destiny thing, but I'm in the different destiny. That's why I'm not uh, getting it right now. But the other thing I do need to be a cleric for, I think. I'll bring back Twist of Fates. Well, I haven't thought about Twist of Fates, honestly, in a little while. That was a that was a system. I kind of like that system, but uh, I think I've come to appreciate what we've been able to do as a result of not having it. Chef of Kitchen Three, Yay. and their dish is your piece of the action. Now to find the final chef. Oh, I left Bulwark behind, didn't I? Let me bring you up, buddy. 